Number one says the half-life of a carbon-14 substance is 5,730 years. A fossil has six picograms of carbon-14 at one point in time. A picogram is a trillionth of a gram, which is one times 10 to the negative 12. So which expression describes the amount of carbon-14 in picograms um, T years after it was measured to be six picograms? So a whole lot of numbers in here that you can ignore, um, including the 14 from the carbon and um, this whole thing about what a picogram is. So what you do need to recognize is that we're talking half-life. So our growth factor is going to be one half. So when we look at these, um, C and D, we can rule out right away because they're not using a growth factor of a half. So then um, the six is our initial value, which both A and B have. So our initial amount or our initial value is that six. So we're really looking at the exponent here. So we've got six times one half. And then um, our half-life is happening every 5,030 years. And now we want to do this um, in years here. So then we're going to be taking our years divided by 5,730 in order to figure out after one year. So that's going to be A. Number two, the half-life of a carbon-14 substance is, again, 5,730 years. A tree fossil was estimated to have about 4.2 picograms of carbon-14 when it died. The fossil now has 0.5 picograms. So how many years ago did the tree die? So this carbon is going to be reduced by a factor of half every year after it died. So it started at 4.2. So then divide by 2 is 2.1. Divide by 2 is 1.05 carbon left. Divide by 2 again is 0 0.525. So this is really close to 0.5. So we just need to figure out how many years it took for that to happen. So remember that, this, that these um, factors here of a half happen every 5,000 730 years. So after 5,730 years, it was 2.1. Then after another 5,730 years, it was 1.05. And then after another 5,730 years, it was about 0.5. So this is three half lives later. Um, so you can either add that together three times or think three half lives times 5,730. And you get that this um, substance has 0.5 picograms of carbon after 17,190 years. So that's how long ago it died. Number three, nickel 63 is a radioactive substance with a half-life of about 100 years. An artifact had 9.8 milligrams of nickel 63 when it was first measured. Write an equation to represent the mass of nickel 63 in milligrams as a function of these two different things. So as a function of T in years. So the function in years um, is going to equal the initial value. And then we're doing half-life. So our growth factor is a half every 100 years. Well, we want this in one year. So then we're going to do T divided by 100. And then if we're writing it in a factor of days or as a function of days, so now we have to figure out how many days um, 100 years is. So 100 years times 365 days in every year um, will give us the number we need to divide by. So this is going to be 36,500 days. So we would have to take and divide that exponent by 36,500. Number four, Tyler says the function f of x equals 5 to the x is exponential. And so it grows by equal factors over equal intervals. 
He says that um, the factor must be the 10th root of 5 for an interval of 1 10th because 10 of those intervals makes an equal interval of 1. So do we agree with Tyler? Explain our reasoning. So if we think about an interval, okay, we don't know how much this is representing, but if we had to split it into 10 equal factors, okay, so we're going to split this into 10 equal factors. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 equal factors. That means that we're going to take this number times itself 10 times, and that needs to equal our, in, our overall growth factor of 5. So then how do we solve this? So undoing an exponent of 10 would mean that we'd have a 10th root of 5. So agree with Tyler, yes, because if we're going to multiply a number together 10 times, to equal something, the undo of that is a tenth root. Number five, the population of a city is modeled by this equation where D is the number of decades since 1970. What do 0.3 and 100,000 mean in the situation? So in this, um, the 0.3 is the growth rate, not the growth factor, but the growth rate meaning that this population is growing 30% um, each decade. And then 100,000 is your initial population. So write an equation for the function to represent the population in years after 1970. So this one is in decades. So one decade is equal to 10 years. So then one tenth of a decade equals one year. So now our exponent is gonna need to be um, our time divided by 10. Um, so 100,000 times, and I'm just gonna put 1.3, which is just adding this together. So 1.3 to the year divided by 10. So a tenth of a year. And then write the equation, um, oh, and we should call this f. So f of y is equal to this. So write an equation for the function g to represent the population in c, which is going to be centuries. So we're going to be doing g of c equals 100,000 and then times that growth factor of 1.3. So now we have to think about how many decades is a century because now we want centuries up here. So 10 decades equals one century. So this is already solved for centuries. So this um, number up here is going to be 10C. The number six, the function f is exponential. Its graph contains the points 0, 5, and 1.5, 10. Find f of 3. So here we have, we go up 1 and a half, and then we can take a look at how much this output is growing. What factor is it growing since it's exponential? So this is multiplying by 2 for an addition of 1.5 years. So now if we go up this same interval, another 1.5 years, we would be at 3. So then we should increase the output by a factor of 2 again since it's the same size interval. So 10 times 2 would be 20. So f of 3 would equal 20. Now they want us to use this value to help us find f of 1 because now we know um, f of 0 was 5, and now we know f of 3 is 20. So we can use that to help us get a one-year interval. So for this, our growth factor going from here to here is times by 4 after we go up 3 years. So now we want to get to just 1, so we want to split this into 3 equal intervals. So this growth factor is 4, but then we want to split it into an interval of one third to get what our growth factor um, would be there. So then um, this is going to give us 
five, our initial amount times this growth factor of four to the one third power because it's only moving a third of an interval from the first one. So whatever that equals, you can multiply that out in your calculator or leave it like this. You can even write it as five times the cube root of four, right? Since one third is the same as the cube root. So now if we wanted to write an equation, we would take our initial value times the growth factor. Um, and then instead of one third, we would have um, X over three for our variable. So this would be for every year um, you could plug in for X. Number seven, select all expressions that are equivalent to eight to the two thirds power. So first thing I like to do is rewrite this a couple of ways. So I'm gonna take the three and make it into a root. So then I know it can be written like this with the two either under the square or under the cube root or outside of it. Then I also know that two to the third power is eight. So the cube root of eight is two. So this part right here is equal to two. So I also know that this expression is equal to two squared or equivalent to it, and two squared is four. So here's some equivalent expressions to help me. So cube root of eight squared is definitely true, and cube root of eight with the squared outside is true. Square root is not. Two squared we saw, okay, so this is good. Two to the third, no. 2 squared is 4, so 4 is also equivalent.